Hello, this is CPW and I'm going to do a little video showing us how to set up a Forge workspace in IntelliJ IDEA version 2016.1 because it finally works. Okay, so we're going to go and check out Forge from GitHub. Okay, first of all I need to specify my master password which should let me access GitHub. Okay, great. So that's the SSH ones. Now let's put the proper one in there. Here's the Minecraft Forge one. So, first of all, I need to make a folder, Projects Minecraft, because, hey, why not? Let's add a new folder, call it Minecraft. Okay, and we're going to call this Forge, because why not? Keep the path nice and short. So, we're going to clone from GitHub into that Forge directory. And, uh, yes, this is the first time this has really worked properly. And it's now asking me if we want to check out an idea project file, the build.gradle file. Okay, yes, we would like to open that. If you don't get this, I suggest you restart Gradle and delete the uh, download that it just done into this directory. Um, it will show up. Sometimes it shows a different dialogue, but this normally is what gets shown. Would I like to open it? Yes. Okay, so we're going to get this screen and it's going to ask us where the Gradle project resides, which is in here. We don't need to set user or to import. We don't need to set create directories. We uh, we want to make sure that use default Gradle wrapper is uh, set, selected. We don't want either of these two. The Gradle home should be that. Project format should be .idea, directory based. Uh, our JVM is uh, Java home. This is uh, my current install, 18066. I should update. There you go. And we hit OK. And it will quickly run a brief build. It won't build the entirety of Forge yet. What it's doing is it's just setting up enough of Forge so it knows about the structure. So first thing it's going to note is that we know about uh, a Git repository. OK. So Forge is under Git, but it's not registered in the settings. So we want to add that as a root. So it will now know about uh, Forge. And if we go and look at the project, we can see that it's got Forge. We can see some stuff in here, but not a lot. The Forge source is there, but none of the project stuff is there. So uh, currently, this is not a runnable Forge environment, but that's fine. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to uh, pull out. Where is it? It's in here. Ah, here we go. Okay, so we can see here that the latest commit was by Fry. That was uh, this morning uh, for the 1.9 branch, and we want to go on to that branch. Okay, so we're going to branch origin 1.9 because we want to work on 1.9. Branch origin 1.9, check out as new local branch. Bang. So, new branch name 1.9. Okay, great. So, we are now checked out as uh, branch 1.9. <coughs> Which is good. So a few things change. Fry has been editing stuff. Very nice. Now, next up, we need to go and we need to create a Gradle operation here. So when we go over here, we should see Forge as our root here. This is the Gradle uh, environment. And we need to run a couple of build setup tasks. Where is it? Forge Gradle here. So this setup task here is the task we need to run. We want to run it pretty much whenever we pull down changes. So it's probably an idea to make a uh, persistent forge setup uh, task for this. So we're going to do that. Um, and we need to make sure it's single instance. We don't want to be running many of these in parallel. The tasks we want to run are clean and set up. Uh, we need to specify here, this is important, we need to specify more memory for f uh, Gradle, otherwise we won't have enough. Uh, I'm going to set 4 gigabytes, the minimum we recommend is 2 gigabytes, um, but uh, I'm going to give it 4 gigabytes, makes it go just that touch faster. Okay, and we now have a task up here, which we can run, and we will now run the task. So we're going to sit back, we're going to relax, and we're going to wait for Forge to build. So what it's doing now is it's pulling down all of the aspects of Forge and running through it. You can see all the individual tasks running here. 
We're going to run the obfuscation. It'll take a few seconds, about seconds this one takes. Seven, eight. Ooh, there you go, nine seconds this time. Uh, decompile this one will take a few seconds, about uh, around about 60 seconds on my machine here. This is a uh, old 3770 from about four years ago, so not the fastest contemporary hardware, but uh, it runs runs decently fast because I've given it lots of memory. So while we wait for this. Anyway, this is the uh, Forge environment uh, in Eclipse, uh, in a, not in Eclipse, in IntelliJ. Uh, Eclipse is, uh, in my opinion, a far inferior product to this now. Uh, this is such a nicer experience. The fact that you can just run the Gradle right inside of the uh, thing and it shows you exactly what's going on. It's not confused by what's going on. Uh, even though we've heavily customized how Gradle works, does not uh, makes for a very nice experience. This is uh, this is lovely. I've run this a few times now uh, to make sure I know what's going on, and it uh, it always runs really nicely. So hopefully, in a few more seconds, we should be done. There it is. It's finished. So we're doing the uh, the post processing of the decompiled code. This takes a few seconds. Bunch of tech searches here. Um, and then we do the first of the remaps. Uh, we're going to pull out all the stuff. We're going to be making our um, clean resources, uh, setting up the projects for Forge, uh, generating IDE projects, uh, all the idea projects. And we are complete. Yes. OK, excellent. So at this point, uh, everything should be present and visible here. We can see the project subdirectory here, which will contain the actual code. Here's Minecraft down here. Currently, as you can see, it's not set up for uh, execution. That will be fixed momentarily. And uh, then we are good to go. So what we need to do now is if we go up here, we're going to add in. Uh, that is not the right path. That's my main development. Minecraft, Forge, Projects build.gradle we are adding so we've gone to the gradle projects tab here okay and we click the plus button and we are adding in the newly checked out and newly created this is generated each time we run setup forge we regenerate this file and everything else in this project subdirectory and this was part of the problem that gradle had before and part of the problem that eclipse still has but doesn't appear to be a problem any longer so we uh, add the uh, projects build Gradle into the system. OK, it's now going to ask us. It's going to complain that we don't know where uh, Gradle home is, but we can use the Gradle wrapper task configuration, which is fine. OK, and uh, what that will do is it will actually go down and pull down a version of Gradle from the website. I think it's 2.7 at the moment and sort of uses that as a proxy for Gradle because the projects directory does not know about where Gradle is. So we hit OK with use Gradle wrapper task configuration. And uh, now it's what it's going to do is it's just going to construct its in memory version of what this project looks like. OK, and what we're going to get now is we're going to see all the different modules that need to be imported. We've got the clean with a source set main and test. Uh, we've got the root module, which is called projects, and then we've got forge with source set main and test. So what we're going to get is we're going to get these new multi-projects, which are very nice. And we're done. There we are. So if we now go to the project structure, we can see what it looks like. So this is the main project. Um, I do advise that uh, if you're doing forge development, you should make sure that you set the project language level to six, because we currently are... Uh, uh, compiling against six, not eight, which will trigger a rebuild. <clears throat> uh, but if we review the project, we've got these new things, these multi projects. These are the bits that didn't work before, but they do now. So we can see here the uh, project output paths. We can see all of the logic and structure for the individual parts of the project. Everything looks correct. which is great.
but uh, at this point we are good to go and we now have a functional forge now one of the things we won't have is we won't have the uh, run configurations they are generated by Gradle um, and we need to copy them into our environment so we're going to open a terminal okay and if we go into projects here we can go into the there is a subdirectory of in here called idea okay and then there is this directory called run configurations and what we want to do is copy run configurations up to the top level directory Okay, so we're going to copy the run configurations into that top level directory underneath Forge here. Okay, and now we should see. Oh, come on, reload. Yeah, reload. There we are. Okay, we can now see the clean client, clean server, Forge client, Forge server tasks that came from that run configurations directory, which is nice. So we can close that. And uh, at this point, we can now go. We do need to do a little bit of cleanup on these guys because they don't have the paths correctly set, but that's fine. We just need to add in the word projects here. Uh, and we need to use the class path of clean main for clean clients. And then if we go into here and add the word projects and we said it's clean main. This is more a problem with how uh, the IntelliJ task inside of Forge Gradle works than it is a problem of, of IntelliJ itself. Uh, you could just as easily recreate these run configurations for yourselves. It's not a problem. For Forge, we're gonna use Forge main, and for Forge, we're gonna use Forge main apply okay now then here comes the money shot <clears throat> it's just doing a make of forge and here we go still doing the compiler forge launching forge as we can see here is forge being launched hello minecraft we are now running forge inside of our environment and that is the basics of how to set up a development environment in IntelliJ under Forge. And uh, I'll just show you where everything is. So we can see that we've got the main route here, Projects Minecraft Forge, then we go into Projects. We can see the Minecraft source is down here. Okay. Uh, here's all of our Minecraft source. And we can see all the Forge sources over here. Just where you would expect it to be. And of course we can do this and look up a block. There's block. Okay, you can go away now. <laughs> okay, so we can see our block class here with all the forge patches in it. It just works. Uh, one, uh, one last task actually I will show you now. Uh, so if we go back over to Gradle, one thing that we do want to be able to do, if we go into the Forge Gradle tasks, we want to be able to generate patches, okay? So we should create a, f create a Gradle task for running gem patches, and that's all we need to do, okay? And we should make sure that's single instance only, okay? And now if I do this, I should be able to generate patches. And it will run and it will do all the stuff it needs to to generate patches for Forge. Which will take a wee while because it always does. It has to do the uh, compile first. 
and it's going to uh, translate the uh, compiled code um, to generate uh, what's known as an abstract syntax tree for the compiled code, which it can then use to interpret the source code so that it can generate a range map containing the indexes of all the references in the source relative to the uh, uh, relative to the baseline code. Uh, this range map is then used to translate all of the forged source code back from MCP naming into search naming, which means we can then run and generate patches with the search names, which means that we get more stable patching for minor versions. So the, uh, the patches should apply much more cleanly between uh, minor versions, like if we uptake uh, pre-3, which I believe was released the other day, uh, then these patches should almost all apply without difficulty because they're using search names. Whereas if we tried to run it with MCP names, there's a significant risk. This takes a wee while. This will take about another 20 or 30 seconds. It's effectively doing a decompilation. Anyway, I will be making a follow-up video um, where I'll just quickly show what it looks like to import a regular user development environment from the MDK into, it, into IntelliJ. Just for anyone who needs to know how to do that, but uh, I don't think that that's anywhere near as complicated. Okay, here we go, and we are nearly done. It's just running the retro map now, so that won't take as long because that's pretty much just matching up the... Uh, range map with the rest of the code and patches are now generated hooray so if we go over and we look at the local changes oh look <laughs> it complains about a whole pile of unversioned files all right very good let's see if it can find anything shouldn't find anything what's it complaining about unversioned files Oh, yes, well, of course, there's a huge pile of them underneath that stuff. But as we can see, there's actually no changes because the uh, the patches are stable these days and they don't have a problem. So thank you very much for listening. And um, I hope to see a few people using uh, Gradle uh, and uh, IntelliJ for doing Forge.